In this video we'll consider transformations. Transformations are commonly used in statistics if there are some issues with the distribution assumptions that are being made in an analysis. We'll consider three data sets from different packages within R and look at different types of transformations that we could apply. We'll start off with a data set in the NLME mixed effects library. So first up we will make this library available. So we type require NLME, submit this command and R tells us that this package has been loaded. So the data set that we're interested in is a data set on orthodontic measurements across various subjects which has 108 rows with four columns of data. Now with this data set it's taken over um, an age period so if we take a look at the data frame orthodont and extract the age variable we'll see that the measurements are taken at ages 8, 10, 12 and 14 years. Now in the analysis we're interested in taking a baseline which could be the midpoint of these ages which would be 11 years old so if we wanted to adjust this data so that it was centered around 11 years we would simply subtract 11 from that column and here we get the new scaled variable. Other data sets might make use of logarithmic transformations. For example in the modern applied statistics with S library there's a data set on absenteeism in school children in Australia in New South Wales. So to get access to this data set we again use the require function and in this case we're getting the mass package. Now the data set is called quine so if we have a quick look at let's say the first 10 rows of this data so we use the square brackets to indicate that we're picking out specific rows and columns. 1 colon 10 is shorthand for creating a sequence of numbers from 1 to 10. So here we'll see the fifth column days stores the number of days of absenteeism. So if we wanted to pick out just this data we would do quine dollar days which extracts that column. Now we may want to work with this data on the log scale as there are zeros we offset by one so we add plus one to the command to add a day and then we put brackets around that and if we want to do this on the natural logarithm scale we use the function log or if we wanted to do it on a log 10 scale we'd use the function log 10. The third data set that we're going to make use of is in the ggplot2 package so we load this package again and it's the data set on diamonds. Now this data set contains various bits of information so again let's say take a look at the first 10 rows of the data set we can see that the last three columns x y and z are information about measurements on the length width and depth of that particular diamond so let's say that we're interested in taking those bits of information and for illustrative purposes we'll work with the first 30 rows rather than all 54,000 diamonds that are included in the data set so to extract only columns x y and z we could count across and say well those are columns 8, 9, 10 or we can create a vector giving the names of these columns which means that if they happen to move around R will still pick out the columns that we're interested in. So the C creates a vector and as its character strings indicating the column headings we've got x, y, z or in inverted commas. Run that command and we can see that we've got the first 30 rows of the data set so let's say that we're interested in scaling all of these columns. So we do two operations. First of all, we could center them to the mean value across the data and then scale to unit variance. So if we bring back the previous command and make use of the function scale, we'll now see that the mean values which we've centered to are given here for the x, y, and z, and the variances which are used for scaling are provided as a last part of the output as well as the actual values that we scale to.